Hello guys, my name is Lenny and today I was asked an interesting question. How did I implement the obstacle system? That's a pretty important question and I'm glad someone asked it. This is the best hint I can give you. <laughs> it's an 2D array, the two dimensional array of Boolean values. The way it works um, is, let's say this is your game board. These are the tiles or points on your game board and you store a boolean value for each of them. If there's an object on one of them, let's say this one, the boolean value for this particular tile will be different than for empty. Um, in my game I set the boolean value to true as it's obstacle, so like through when there's an obstacle. This is the x-coordinate, this is the y-coordinate. That's probably all about how the obstacles are stored. Only one note that you access them with this um, difficulty, whatever that is. Uh, it's really simple and this is the reason, this is the main reason I used this system as it is fast, really fast. What I wanted to talk about next is actually um, collision detection as uh, the person asked as well. How do I detect uh, collisions? That's also an interesting question. Uh, let's see, let's say I got um, Fred here and there's a wall here and I want Fred to go to the wall and stop when he hits the wall. I want him to stop right, right here. This uh, wall is um, inside this, well, this wall is mapped inside the obstacle array. Uh, for each piece of the wall, wall, there's a true value somewhere right here, anywhere. This is just an example. Um, the way this works is that I calculate the location of Fred in the next game step. By next game step, I mean I use update. I don't have like um, different types of updates. I just use um, one update and it's like every 30 milliseconds. Um, so I know where Fred, well, what's the distance in the next step. I know that Fred makes like, let's, um, Let's say the step is 30. Fred makes uh, 30 distance pieces in one update. And I know uh, that Fred is going right as I can detect what buttons are being pushed. So I know that D is set to true. That's how I um, cover pushed buttons or pressed buttons. So I know the direction, I know the distance, I know the speed. So I can predict where Fred will be. And I can actually check the obstacles. I know that Fred will be at um, location, let's call the location next position. And the next position will have x and y coordinate. To check the obstacle system, you just um, check the array. Obstacles. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Um, this returns the value if there's an obstacle or not. 
This way you can detect the collision. But um, what happens next? If you detect collision from afar, you don't really want to stop the character as it would stop like right here. Or even there, if the step is long enough, if the step is like this, the character will stop right here. But there's a whole um, lot of space in between and you actually want Fred to hug the wall and don't stand um, this far from it. So I have uh, implemented a new system, well another system, how to check uh, this exception. Um, when Fred gets near an obstacle and he's, um, well the obstacle is being detected on the next step, I try to check if there's a possibility in between, somewhere in between, where Fred can stop. I start uh, with the with this position and I move towards Fred. So I'm trying to put Fred here, here, here. And if I actually manage to put him there and there's a um, false value in the obstacle system which says that there's no obstacle there, I put Fred there. That's how I'm able to let Fred hug the wall. One thing to note is that you need to keep um, checking the collision for this direction and this direction separate as you actually want Fred to be able to hug the wall and move down at the same time or up. This way you can move around borders like this, this, this and in the opposite directions. As the player is actually holding, um, in this case A, he's trying to move left, so he's hugging the wall, but also he's holding the w, but w button and he wants to move up as it's actually natural. So this is uh, the reason for keeping the checking or validation for each direction separate and this way Fred can actually hug the wall and move as well. I believe this covers the topic. I'm gonna pause the video and think about what I just said. I might even come up with some more ideas. And yes, I remembered one more thing. Well, let's open a fresh paint. Let's say um, well, there's a there's the Fred again. There's the wall, and what I haven't actually implemented is checking if um, with the next step Fred will would end up here as the step is um, 30 pieces. And I don't actually check if Fred would pass through any obstacles on the way, so Fred would end up here. Um, the main reason is performance, as I didn't need to implement the system yet, so um, I didn't implement it. Uh, I actually have the step set up so small that Fred isn't able to pass through any of the game objects as they are bigger than one step. But if my objects were really small, like little sticks which Fred wouldn't be, well, shouldn't be able to pass through, I would implement this system as it's really important for small wooden fence to prevent um, objects from passing through. Yeah, that's really terrible fence. <clears throat> Never mind. I would actually check the along the path if there are any obstacles, and then I would switch back to the obstacle system I used before. I will detect the closest part of the obstacle and try to uh, move Fred closer to that or hug it. But as I said. Um, for me, it's not that important and I don't actually need it right now.
I might need it in the future. I actually plan on adding fences and that's probably gonna be the time where I'm gonna implement this feature. I hope this covers the topic. Um, if you got any other questions, I am glad to answer them. And good luck with your game. <laughs> See ya.